Today on the Will and Willis podcast, a very special guest from Ring of Honor, Prince Nana, is going to check into the show. That's all that and a lot more here on the Will and Willis Wrestling Podcast. Spanning the globe for the latest information, the ins and outs, the ups and downs, and the behind the scenes story. In the world of pro wrestling, it's the Will and Willis Wrestling Podcast. And now, here are your hosts, Will and Willis. All right, we're back on the Will and Willis podcast. Will, man, how's your week going? Better, much better. Got much a, be- better. a better week? Yes, sir. Kids still acting crazy, but that comes with the territory. But you're but you're back on the program, and that's a that's a good that's a good thing. I'm happy to be here, sir. We've got uh, we've got Will back in the studio, and guess what, Will? What's that? We have another guest. Really? Are you excited? Yes. I even want to fathom a guess as to who this might be. Okay. <laughs> um, you know what? Uh, hang on. I know you'll have some questions once I once I bring him in. Let's let's just bring him into the podcast. Are you ready? Oh, he's it. Oh yeah, he's on the line right now. Put him on screen. All, All right. right, here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Former wrestler and manager, he has also uh, been with Ring of Honor for over twelve years. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to bring you. <laughs> Prince Nana. Stop it. It is Prince Nana indeed. <laughs> what's going on, my friend? Jason, what's going on, baby? How are you, Nana? I'm good. I'm good, Jason. You know, Jason has been running around like a chicken without a head for the last <laughs> four or five days. All right? Like a chicken that got his head cut off for dinner for Prince Nana just to make this happen. So I'm happy to be here with you guys. It, I mean, it, the, it's always the, the leader of the embassy, Will. Yes. How did you? How did you pull that one? How on? did I pull this? Hey, off? we had to do it for you. Willis. We had. Right. You did it for me, you Your Highness. You, you did it for me. Yes. For yeah, you. we did this for you, brother. Oh my goodness. Yeah, I mean, I. <laughs> listen, oh my I appreciate goodness. it a lot because I mean, I, I you had a big announcement on Facebook. I did. I and, did, my friend. And, and I reached out and I was like, well, you know, let's let's find out what this is all about, and and the prince. Answered me in two minutes, Will. That's right. Wow. That's right, Will. I try to make sure that I get back, you know, to anyone that has a name with a J, all right? I make sure <laughs> that I get back. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, I, I'm trying to make sure I keep them out of the, the, the meaning for the J. Jailbird. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but when Jason got back I like to me, I guy. said, you know what? Jason is someone who is serious about um, his craft. And Jason is somebody who understands history and, and, and wants to be a part of it. So I'm glad to be here on the podcast, and I'm glad that you reached out in regard to that post, Jason. Thank you. Thank you, Nana. I, I'm, I'm flattered, first of all. Absolutely, um, man. I, I noticed, uh, like I said, let me, let me get, give you some plugs, first of all. I noticed the Prince Nana <laughs> show on YouTube. Thank you. Thank you and very you, much. And, you, awesome. and you, you've got that going. And yeah, I see. And then you're also on Facebook, Twitter. Right, right. All right. So um, for those, my viewers that don't know, and, and me and Will's viewers. Come on, spit it out, spit it I, out. I'm right. trying, I'm trying. My I'm, God, I'm what, very what do you have? Spaghetti? You ate spaghetti before the interview? Come on. <laughs> it made him lethargic. Uh, I had, I did, it, was, it was Cocoa Pebbles. <laughs> Jesus lethargic. Christ. Spit uh, it out already. <laughs> all right, so so tell us a little bit about how you how you got started in the business. You started as a as a wrestler, correct? Yes, um, you know, I, it wasn't as a wrestler because you you know when I when I finally went to the wrestling school, all right, and this is Mr. Johnny Rods, the Johnny Rods, yes, Johnny Rods, Hall of Famer, Hall of Famer, Famer yes, sir. Big shout out to Johnny Rods, who's a great inspiration in my life. But you know, I started out as Johnny Rods' photographer at the age of um fifteen. Mm-hmm. All right, I was too young at that time to start wrestling, but I wanted to, you know, save my own money up when I was a little kid. All right, and I saved all that money up. All right, even though we have millions of dollars in our in our family trust. All right, I still saved up, you know, some money to make sure that I um could go to the wrestling school while I was uh, completing high school at the time in Brooklyn, New York. So you know, my my mother who you know, is a true supporter and a true champion. She, you know, she gave me the okay to train, but she said that she wouldn't, you know, put any money into it because she, you know, she was afraid and she didn't want to 
take blame in case I got hurt. So she was as, she as was teaching as, you some responsibility, also. Exactly. She was like she didn't want to, you know, to be, you know, uh, you know, approving something that she really didn't want me to kind of do. Not because of any particular reason, but mainly because she didn't want to see me hurt myself. <laughs> All right. Yeah, you know. Well, so you know, part. after after I got the okay from mom, I trained with um, uh, Devon with um big Vito, all right the spanish angel all right and of course johnny rods and and man and we had a great great time training it was, it was some of the toughest trainings that i'll ever go to and i don't think there's trainings like that anymore in wrestling but you know uh times change but definitely was one of my best experiences in wrestling starting starting out at at johnny rods you know i helped him you know, start the company, you know, that he has there uh -huh. running now. It's called World of Unpredictable Wrestling. I actually gave, uh, you know, helped Johnny come up with the name for that company. And it's stuck around. That name has stuck around now for almost 20 years. So it's definitely, a, you know, um, uh, it shows you how, how deep and how, you know, uh, passionate I am about the wrestling business. Leaving a mark that can't be erased. There you go, my friend. So, All right. So I want to I, I, I want to throw in a, a a touch of irony here. Oh Prince, no. Prince Prince Nana did an interview with with a with a group called Hit the Ropes Radio in April of 2009. Okay. That August they interviewed me. <laughs> what? <Wow>. Yes. <laughs> Wait a minute. So you got you you had you had gotten interviewed before me? No, you you they got you first. And then you were the following. Week. And then I was the fall. I was a few months later in August. Wow! They wow. really didn't. They couldn't find nobody. I guess that's what I. <laughs> that's. I hey, like at this least guy. They got, the they word got right somebody. out of my mouth. I know. Uh, Will was Will, hit the ropes. Will was getting ready to ropes. say that, that, that we were oh. hard up for. They were hard up for talent by uh, by August. <laughs> right? I know. I know. That's how it is in the wrestling business. But you know, hit the ropes. They're one of the top ones now in in the whole podcast world. Are they really? Okay. I haven't checked their stats lately, but that's... yeah, I think they're doing pretty good. They're oh, doing we're gonna, pretty good. Well, we're gonna we we are gonna strive we'll to be that, that and 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 be better. There you go, my friend. You know, and and you guys can be really really great uh, nail clippers for me. All right, I would have love for you guys to be coming over to Ghana and clipping my nails whenever you want. All right, you're invited. <laughs> all right, anytime, guys. <laughs> Clipping your nails? You get yeah. the toenails, Will. Nail clipper. <laughs> I wanted to cut the grass. <laughs> hey, Dad, we don't have grass. We no have grass? the set road. We have dirt on the side of the house. It's but we put like little plants, all right, inside the dirt and it looks beautiful. So I figured as much money as you have, you could afford an irrigation system or something like that. We right. do, we do. But oh, okay. sometimes I like the natural look. You know, sometimes I like the natural look. <laughs> Okay, so I just go with the natural look, but you know, back to the nail clipping job. That oh man, you guys can have it. All right, anytime you want to come to Ghana, full expense paid. Oh. You know, you clip nails, you get some fufu soup. We make sure you're good. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad to know. Hey, so where do I sign up? So funny, people would die. I'm glad to. I'm glad to know if this podcast thing doesn't work out. I have something to fall back on. <laughs> always, my friend. So, always. So how Always. did the how did the transition go uh, once you went to uh, Johnny Rod School and you finished your training? How um, talk about Ring of Honor a little bit? Uh, that was you know that was like a chance uh, situation actually. You know before you know I, I I was at Johnny's for like maybe seven or eight years. I think it was seven years. Mm -hmm. You know from being a kid and then becoming a you know a young adult in my twenties. Um, I finally, you know, found my little niche. I was doing shows in New York for a, a great promoter at the time, uh, Frank Goodman, USA Pro Wrestling. Shout out to Frank Goodman. Uh, and also for a, a gentleman by the name of Jack Sabbath with a company called ICW. So I, I got my break uh, really with those two companies as far as like regular work and, and you know, a following that was just unpropelled at that time in pro wrestling when the independents were very very hot um so you know after making a big name for myself at icw in queens new york and it was buzzing all over the wrestling business everyone was talking about you know the ladder match between xavier and low-key wrestling yes, right, right. 
rest in peace to my good friend Xavier. Um, you know, Gabe Sapolsky, he, he approached me uh, at one of the ICW shows. And again, I told you ICW was very popular back then. I was one of the top names in the company where, where um, was that based out of just to, to it was based in queens at a queens. place called okay. the elks lodge okay it was called the elks lodge ecw used to run shows there also okay. queens boulevard so you know gabe sapolsky you all know who he is he used yes. to be you know a paul Heyman guy he ended up um you know uh working with rf video who is rob feinstein mm -hmm. who was the original founder of the the company and then got ousted you know he ended up um approaching me and he said hey you know uh nana i'm a huge huge fan of 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 your work a very big fan of your work and we're starting this new company uh starting in philadelphia i want you to be a part of it and you know at that time opportunity you know i was looking for opportunity you know wwe had just seen me i needed to continue to put my name out there and you know what i told him i said i'm on board my friend and that's how uh, Ring of Honor was born. So, you know, at the first show, I was on it. I was able to, you know, um, you know, uh, really make an impact and, and be with the company, not only 12 years, but almost for like 16, 17 years. Oh, well, 16. Years. Oh, I had it wrong. 16 or 17 yeah. years. Yeah, they started in 2002. Are you are you still employed with them? Are you still the director? No, I'm not employed by, oh. by anyone. I'm self-employed. Oh, I'm yeah. a liaison. All right, I'm a okay. liaison to many people okay. in the wrestling business. All right, so don't be asking me no technical nope. questions about my dealings. All no right, favorite. no, I no, have nothing my like own that. situation that I have to deal with. All right, yeah. so, <laughs> tell him like it is. You call me a, a liaison. All right, right. A liaison is someone who might get paid. All right, so just leave it there. <laughs> all right, all right. Leave it there. I saw a a, a match, and you were you were. A lot beefier <laughs> in, your, in the beginning very, of your career. Very. Uh, uh, you, uh, I think it was on WWE Metal. You wrestled Crash <laughs> Holly. Yes. <laughs> and yes. just one of the most terrible commentating calls I ever I ever heard. <laughs> Coach called you Prince Banana. Yes, I. You know that's that's the hate. That's the hate that goes on in the business. But go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just, no, I just thought that was one of I the worst agree. calls, but. Um, so let me ask you about the transition into managing. I, I myself, I actually started as a referee. Oh, excellent! And I found the I, I found the transition to managing a little bit harder. Like like managing was becoming a lost art. Do you, Very do you, much so. Yeah. So so you agree with that? So so. Oh, definitely. How did you manage to keep yourself, I guess, viable? Was it because of your incredible mic skills, or because of your previous experience, or you're just business savvy, or all of that? I know. I know. It's like, how did you get it? You yeah. know. Um. And and I'm just gonna be honest. I had a I've had a gift of gab since I was a baby. Uh huh. All right, I had the gift of gab. I was um, always wanting to entertain. I always wanted to be in front of a camera on a microphone. You know, I used to sing in, in elementary school, sing in high school, sang at national anthems, you know, um, just an all around entertainer and I love music. No, you'll so, get Will started because he's a musician. Oh, oh yeah, forget it. Like we could be in, we we could start a band, my friend. <laughs> it sounds it. like a plan. We'll, we'll call the we'll call the band Goombi. All right, you know, just to have <laughs> you know, you know. But the you know, as far as you know, the you know, where did I get that from? It, it, it I believe I was born oh, with dude. that um, ability inside of me, and and I really didn't like realize the ability like my whole career i was just training and following the the guidelines and following the blueprints and you learn as you go you know and you you know learn and this and that but the day when i really realized okay wow i have this uh, great talent not only to um you know be a great manager which I, you just said is a lost art but just the performer period you know i found out at um uh, you know, in the Hammerstein Ballroom when I wrestled R.D. Evans, you know, uh, mm -hmm. you know, when it was on pay-per-view, that was one of my first big, you know, matches after years and years of managing. You know, I had managed for years and then all of a sudden I was back in the ring 
and and that is what let me realize how how deep my passion was for entertaining because you know I went out there and, and put on a, a really good show and, and really something that, you know, people will remember for a long time. So, yeah, I think it's something I was born with, uh, you know, and I enjoy, you know, making making people kind of believe, uh, you know, uh, what it is that I'm, I'm performing for them. So, yeah. Right. I guess I'm, I guess I'm a little biased too, um, having having managed in the in the southeast. I, I feel like it's something that should make a comeback. Um, but I, but I do feel, and I, I've listened to interviews with you in the past. I, I definitely feel like people should be getting the proper training, not just Absolutely. not just coming in and and say, oh, I'm going to be a manager. I mean, yeah, that's not. Yeah, that's not. I don't recommend that. Um, you know, the way the wrestling business is now, it seems like most of the people that are getting uh, deals in front of the camera and behind of the camera is like you know college graduates and stuff like that. You know, uh, let's get back to the basics wrestling business. Let's get back to being a mom and pop business and, and, and on the outside looking like a global business. You know what I mean? Right. I think if the wrestling companies all kind of took, you know, in the backstage a, a more mom and pop's approach and then in front of the cam camera a global approach, I think there would be a, a lot more kind of like, um, you know, uh, a, a line of purpose in what it is that we all do but we we'll, you know once we just start making it big time and or it just i don't know yeah i was hoping Next that question all right jesus right. christ <laughs> <laughs> so, you've been you've been uh been involved in some of the biggest feuds in in ring of honor history i mean uh uh Necro Butcher joining the embassy was a big one for me. Yeah. The the Rhino Homicide feud. Do you, yes. Do you do you have a favorite that, Man, that, that, that you've been that involved with? I know that's two, a tough question. But. Those two were, were some of my greatest. But you know who my greatest was. You know the greatest feud. You know what the greatest feud was. Um, I want you guys to guess, but I'm gonna just say it. You know, it was the 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 CM Punk feud. Oh, oh goodness! You know, the, yes. the CM Punk feud was, and you know, and then also the AJ Styles feud. Yes, but those, you know, the the CM Punk feud was so good, was so good. Mm -hmm. I think that's why he got signed. You know, so like, and 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 I'm I'm proud of him. You know, so I you would take pride in helping him that since he got signed. Sure. All right. So if you're listening, CM Punk reach out to me and say what's up i've been trying to say what's up for like the last nine years right all right but anyway i'm, I'm happy for his success and yeah that was one of my favorite favorite um storylines in ring of honor all the way from the beginning all the way to the end sure. the cm punk storyline was what really you know and of course alex shelley you alex know shelley, right. the cm punk you know uh storyline is really what um got into people's heads sure so um, I've got to ask this. Speaking of people reaching out to you, oh, and, I, and, I, and I hope you remember this, you were telling me a story of um, Mid Afternoon Monday when we spoke on the phone. And I spoke to you. Yes. Oh God. <laughs> that my clone. It must my have been clone a clone. Was supposed to give me updates. It, it, it must have been a slow day or something, or you were bored. <laughs> But uh, you mentioned a, you mentioned a name or two that had had reached out to you. It's like it kind of reminded me of the old saying that uh, you know, be careful of who you oh, step on on the what, way. Don't say don't say what I told you on the phone. Okay, now. I won't say it. I'll, no, I'm leaving okay. that for you. Okay, <laughs> you know, I, I want you to tell the story because it'd be much better from you. You know, it, it, it's not even like about a story, and I'm gonna be very um, broad uh -huh. about this. You know. I'm a person in the wrestling business that um, has helped a lot of people. Now, if I was saying that in the beginning of my career, I'd sound like a fucking retard. Excuse my language. <laughs> no, 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 go ahead. Go on. Okay. We'll if I was saying that in the beginning of my career, I'd sound like a crazy person. But I really am a person who likes to help people. And those are the values that I came up with in my life, period. Right. That's what we were raised with. That's how my family is. That's what we are. Uh, it's the other fellow first. That's it. We help each other. It's about the other person before us. That's right. it. That's what I came up with. Okay. Uh, and, you know, um, 
it, it takes a while. It takes a while to kind of like realize where you are in, you know, in a society, you know, what was the question again? I want you to rephrase it. What <laughs> there was, was well, I don't want to. I don't want to drop the name in case. No, no, no. This is right. I'm cutting you off again. You know, <laughs> basically, basically, my friend, what happened was, you know, there's a big, big opportunity, okay, that I am uh, beginning to unveil, yes. if you will, to the wrestling business. Now, a lot of the people in the wrestling business that know me know that I try my best to be in connect, you know, connection with people who, uh, you know, like wrestling and so on and so forth. So I have a lot of different deals and possibilities going on. But this particular possibility is looking very, very promising to a level where it's very promising. OK, so, you know, you put I put something out on 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 Facebook, which was legitimate. I'm actually looking for individuals in the wrestling business and entertainment business with experience to join the team. Right. You it's put as out simple the feelers. as that. Yeah. It's as simple as that. Mm -hmm. Do you know, Jason, all right, you know, there were people, you see how I told you that CM Punk didn't call me in 10 years? <laughs> well, there were people in the same boat like him that saw that post and then all of a sudden found my number. Yeah, you were telling you know? me that. And like I said, you know, I won't, I won't really, mention the person. Really, and, and you know it's really kind of dis it's it's disheartening because you know why does it have to be like that that means you you know you're not in this to be uh friends right you're in this to capitalize and to see who's going to be able to help you so just say sure. that right you know what i mean you know so just say that my friend you know if you just want to use me just say that if you, you don't want to be my friend you can you ask that you can ask friend. that you can ask that will will had will wrote down a question you, 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 was it yeah. Hulk Hogan yeah. <laughs> hey close close <laughs> very close <laughs> very close Hulk Hogan he's trying to apologize for me to me for the last two years for what I don't know <laughs> All right? wow every day Hulk Hogan wants to apologize by my god well, off the subject, just a tad. I did see your post on Twitter. It was saying that you're looking for uh, somebody was searching for a real opportunity to be successful in right. boxing. Right. Yeah. Basically, what you know, and I'll explain it right here on the phone. You know, I, I was looking for 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 people. I'm still looking, and you know, people are joining the team. You know, just like in wrestling, I had the embassy. You right. know, yes. I, you know, outside in the real world, we have the embassy system. Hmm. All right, we have the embassy system. Yes. It's a system to success. You know, I have the only way that I've been so successful in the wrestling business is because I trained until I became the trainer. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. And I was able to help people. That's the only way I was able to to succeed in the wrestling business. And once people get that that notion, then they'll understand, you know, where they fit in the wrestling business. So when I say online, hey, I have an opportunity for for you guys, you know, it, it, that doesn't mean I'm gonna sign you to Ring of Honor. That doesn't mean I'm gonna. <laughs> give you, yeah, that doesn't mean I'm gonna give you Stephanie's email address. The oh, email. Oh, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> It means you have an opportunity to hear about an opportunity from someone that you know. Because to be honest with you, you know, most of the people that, you know, my team reached out to on Facebook, mm -hmm. I don't know them. They know me. Uh -huh. And when, you know, that's the power of what I was trying to teach, you know, all 84 of the people that came onto the Zoom thinking I was hiring them for the WWE. I explained to them, hey, listen, did do you guys see what just happened here? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm serious. And not, on, and not only that, but it was people that haven't reached out to in years. I guess that was in the years, point I was trying in to years, make. In years, in years, in years. Yeah. You know, if I'm able to have the power to get all of you guys on a call, and it could have been more if I worked, if I really worked hard, like me and my team worked hard, we could have had thousands of people on that call. Right. That is a, that, well. That, I'm that, teachable that and, and I'm the, coachable. The power of that, the power of right. that is, the power of the wrestling business. Are you begging you for know, a if job? You put in, 
enough hard work. Yeah. <laughs> well, I people think, are going to know you. You know, and that's what I was trying to teach these people. Right. Like, monetize your followers. Yes. All right. They're just, everyone's complaining. Oh, I, I'm not getting money. Like, nobody's signing me, this and that. All right. So you start signing the people. You come up with the wrestling company. You right. do something. You monetize the following that you have. Yeah. Make Look your mark. For the investors. Yeah. You know? That Don't makes just sense. sit there and complain. Well, that, exactly. Because some of these people, they have a name too. Of and course. You, and you, they and do. you've got to. I listen. The gentleman that trained me, his name is Robert Keller. Uh, the first thing he's going to teach Who? is my no, name, I'm kidding. I'm Robert. Kidding. Ro I'm <laughs> I know kidding. you've you don't know him, but <laughs> or, or you might. I don't know. You might have worked a show with Bob. Bob's worked with everybody, <laughs> but uh, you know, the first thing he taught me is like you know this is this is a wrestling business. Right. You, you have to market yourself. You have to you know take you know, first you know, take care of your character. Take care of your you know market yourself but you know you got to make some money you cannot you're going to go to these shows and these guys are going to give you you know x dollars but there's more money to be made in you know that's right that's uh, right eight by that's tens right. and 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 t-shirts and and getting your name out and these sorts right. of things right so you know right that's that's basically what i was trying to um teach the guys but you know these <laughs> days guys everyone Oh, we know everything that so it's like but you know, if I would have if I'm signed to AEW, I bet you everybody would have been listening with their tongues hanging out. Oh, yeah, you if I was signed to WWE NXT, everybody would have been sitting there with their tongues hanging out. Right. So it's it's like, you know, uh I'm just laughing because I've been successful in the wrestling business uh -huh. all these years just based on what it is that I was trying to teach, you know, my fellow wrestlers. But you know, right. a couple of guys did you know, are in the system, so the system is definitely working. Thank okay. God. How do I get into the system, sir? It's very simple. It's very simple. You know, uh, a lot of people don't realize it, but there's a lot of money to be made out there. All right? And I'm not talking about a scam. I'm not talking about this or that. I'm just talking about implementing a partnership that's going to enhance your personal life or your business's life, and that's it. And you know, you, you, you listen or you, you, you hear the information and you go from there. That's it. That's it. It's either you're going to do it or not. I noticed that most of the people that are working with me are people that are already uh, successful people and, and wealthy people. The people that I'm trying to show how to be wealthy and successful they continue to walk away from it and and it's uh -huh. really really a sad situation and i think it's because you need to enroll and pay 199 dollars to be a part of a well-known global company right that's going to be you know the, the 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 um you know the front to who you are i mean it's going to be a, a big part of your 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 partnership and i guess you know people who aren't business owners and people who aren't um you know uh enlightened and you you guys know i like to use that word a lot uh, enlightened right. they just don't get it they just don't get it so because they're unwilling to make a, a an investment in themselves right right that's what it is yeah i spent you know and i explained this on that call too mm -hmm. you know I, I i've spent thousands upon thousands of dollars in professional wrestling right to create that um illusion Mm -hmm. for all of the fans and for all of the wrestlers out there that know who I am. And, you know, whenever I go on Facebook and I write all of these um, belligerent things like, you know, uh, <laughs> I know you hate me, I did my job, that's exactly what I mean. Right. It's exactly what I mean. I'm a heel all the way from the beginning to end. And when you're on a, fa on a Prince Nana page, any of my social media pages, you're dealing with Prince Nana. Right. All right. When you are on the phone talking business like Jason and I, you know, talk business this week, you're dealing with someone completely different. That's that's a business person. Right. That's, that's been around. Difference. That's yeah. been in business for over 20 years. Right. With a proven track record. And I've made a lot of people as rich as my um, my family in Ghana. So, you know, I, I just, you know, I'm thankful for that. You got any? You got any other questions, Will? Oh, no, Will. You can't have my girfriend. Next question. No. 
<laughs> get your own, all right? Uh, Veda hey. Scott. Veda <laughs> Scott is available. Go get Veda yeah. Scott. Speaking, oh. of, <laughs> speaking of competing with people, I, I saw a pretty successful uh, uh, YouTube series called Wrestling with Regret, and you were on there. So, so oh, yeah. Did he ever that's, who, that's who I was talking about. Did I'm he, sorry. Did he, he ever send your payment? <laughs> <laughs> he never did. He never, he never did. did. <laughs> that son of a gun. But we, you know what? He actually did jump on the call with all of the seventy-eight hundred people that came on. Oh, did he? And he? Out of all of them, he was one of the people that wrote back to actually say he enjoyed it. But you know, and 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 spoke to me like a human being right. afterward. So hats off to him. He has a great show, Wrestling with Regret. He yeah. was supposed to be doing something with Ring of Honor, but then you know a lot of things got messed up. Uh, you know, prior and then when the um pandemic started. So sure, let's yeah, hope that a lot of these companies are even companies by the time this is all done. Right. So, uh, I, I if with that Ring of Honor still running, correct? I mean, even with the yeah, pandemic, okay. they just had congratulations. You know, they just had um the Pure Wrestling tournament. Yes. Okay. Okay, and um the Octopus won. All right, Jonathan mm -hmm. Gresham. Oh, oh yes, yeah. Okay, I know you were like, "Who the hell is that?" No, I know no, who he is. I've actually Octopus, worked shows with Jonathan. Jonathan Gresham, you better look him up, all right, and get him on your show he's next. A talented? Right? No, he's a talented young man. Uh, you you don't have to tell me twice. You yeah. need to get him on your podcast, all right? But you know, I, they, I will reach doing... out. I haven't talked to him in. Oh, it's been a good twelve years, I know. But hey, listen, I can be your official, you know, podcast plugger. We'll talk about that. All right, that, that's that like, was, okay. That's we like can... fifteen ID seals uh, subscriptions, my friend. Don't worry, I got you. <laughs> All right, I appreciate that. <laughs> no, but I, oh, I, I know Jonathan. Jonathan used to work for an outfit called uh, Champions with Attitudes out of Orangeburg. Oh, yeah. And that's that's who I worked for also. So I so oh, I know so you Jonathan. Know Donnie. You know Donnie. Yeah, the, the Johnny. He came in with a gentleman. Uh, I think they were all trained by Mr. Hughes. Um, yes, they were. Yeah, uh, it was him and you know the um, AR Fox and a whole bunch of other guys. That right. Yeah, AR Fox. Yeah, I was gonna say AR right. Fox was the right. other guy. Yeah. Hats and, off to Mr. Hughes. Mr. Hughes. Yeah, uh, he also trained um, uh, Uha Nation, and I believe he also trained Moose. And a few yes. other people as well. Next so hats moves. off to, um, hats off to uh, Mr. Huge. So was there uh, just to, you know, ask a couple more questions here, and then we'll wrap up. Was there a big? Tra Did you have something? What was your mindset? What were you thinking when the embassy was formulating? Uh, nothing. <laughs> you know, we we were. I was I was basically like in. I was in a blank. I knew that I had a lot of ideas and a lot of my I ideas were being used at almost all the companies that I was working for at that time. Mm -hmm. All right. So, you know, um, I don't know if you know my full story, like my ring of honor, um, experience has always been a plug, a plug and play type of situation. Uh -huh. You know, I was there from the beginning. I was there, uh, you know, I was there for the, for, from the beginning, two years straight. I left for a year, came back, you know, like one of those type of things, you know? Mm -hmm. So when I came back after, I believe like a year, maybe like a six month or a year, quote unquote, you know, sabbatical or whatever you want to call it, uh, Gabe was trying to uh, redevelop Xavier because he had lost the belt mm -hmm. and he was going through a losing streak, blah, 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 something like that. And then, um, you know something with john walters so basically one day you know i was brought back uh we had the meeting they were begging me to be a manager i didn't um refuse it because i knew i would do a good job and like you know i originally as a kid think i think that's what i said i was going to do but i you know i jumped into wrestling because i wanted to learn it so uh you know we had the meeting and um I knew I was going out to manage Xavier, and I'm standing at the curtain, ready to go out. I think AJ Styles or whoever it was that he was wrestling went out. And then Gabe ran to me. He ran over to me, and he's like, um, uh, what's the name of the faction? And right off the top of my head, the embassy came out. 
Interesting. So there was, just, like most great ideas in wrestling, there was really no <laughs> prior plan. There was just no just rhyme there or was reason. no <laughs> prior plan, but but very but, spontaneous. But the, the fact that that name came out um, just lets you know, like that, the creative juices were on the top of my head the whole time. So it's something that's been in my head, but it was like, oh shit, what about that? And right. you know, it came out. So. Thank God it did. Since then, I've you know trademarked it. I own it. Whenever I sign with any type of company, it's uh, that's, Prince Nana. That's part and of the, the embassy. Right. Yeah, that's part, that's of part of the package. Of that's right. So, um, just real quick, um, the company went from Gabe to Carrie Silken, correct? No. No. Gabe never was the owner. Oh, he was never the owner. Was he? He was the no. booker. He was the booker. He was a booker. He okay. was never, never an owner. Maybe he had like percentages inside, but he was never the owner. So he went from Rob Feinstein to Carrie Silken. Feinstein to Carrie Silken. Okay, and then yeah. Carrie Silken sold to Sinclair Broadcasting, correct? That's correct. And right now it's under Sinclair Broadcast Group. Okay, was that a tough transition going from from Carrie to Sinclair? Was there, you know, was there? It was tough. It was tough because. Um, when I say tough, the two years leading into that deal was tough uh -huh. financially for Carrie because it was it was beginning to come down on him as far as like, you know, we were getting a good return, but then the shows were getting bigger and the um, expense was getting bigger as well. Right. So as the expense was getting bigger, you know, the cost to, um, you know, uh, produce shows and right. also acquire the fans to the shows became a lot greater. So, you know, the trans the transition ended up being seamless. Mm -hmm. I think because of that, I think Sinclair at the time saw the, the tremendous growth from what it was, from what it is that we were and to what it was that they were looking at today, right. you know, or, or at that time. So, yeah. <laughs> So I guess my fi I guess my final question, and I'll 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 throw one out to Will before we leave. Um, what do you don't think? Don't leave me like that. I'm not <laughs> no, what <laughs> if, if if you could give advice? If you could give advice to them, what do you think they need to be closer to number one? What do you What no, do you think? Ring talking about um, ROH? Yeah, sure. Just Ring of Honor. Yeah. Um, they need to hire me back, and and, and <laughs> actually, no, I'm being serious. They need uh -huh. to hire me back. Uh -huh. And let me do my magic, like, uh, and let me help the team do its magic the right way. Right. And I'm talking about in a professional manner. Like, it's very professional now. Mm -hmm. Don't get me wrong. The booker right. is professional and this and that. But there's other layers. We're not just a wrestling company. Like, people think, oh, it's a wrestling company. Oh, we're playing games. They think this is a game. Right. Like, not ROH, I'm just saying people in general. In general, right. They take it serious when the money's coming in, but when it's time to actually start preparing for it, people don't take it serious. Uh-huh. You know, and, and I think that's the biggest problem there. Like, this, and, and don't get me wrong, they take it serious. Mm -hmm. But I'm talking about serious. You know what I'm talking about? Like, I'm talking about, like, listen, all this biasness, all of this like uncertainty and all of this, you know, um, hiding in the corners and stuff like shadiness. that. Shadiness. <laughs> the shadiness has to go. Right. It has to go. And I'm not saying that anyone is shady. Mm. You know, because when I walk in the room, I look shady. You know, that's just my, you know. That's I agree me. with you. Me too. <laughs> you, you know what I'm saying? That's just me. But when you actually get to know me, I'm a very, very, you know, um, practical straightforward and honest person when it comes to almost to, to everything right and 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 once the company has that back in the company it'll start to succeed again right now there's a lot of like hot you know ducking in the corners and you know weaving and stuff like that and i'm not saying any one particular mm -hmm. i'm just saying it's like ring of honor is out there but they're hiding something and right. and that needs to be addressed as soon as possible okay Will do you have hiding? Ooh wee. No, go ahead. <laughs> okay. Do you got a do you got a final question for Nana? I want to be part of the team. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's already <laughs> off the uh, yes, I want to be no, part I of like, the team. I like I like this guy. You got I it. like this guy. <laughs> Jason, who is he? This is Will Spann, my co host. 
Will. Yes, sir. You have not this talked is, to this Will. This is what you're going to do, all right? Okay. You better not back out. Because you are like, I like you, and I'm telling you that I'm good. you're going to be a very intricate part of the team. Make okay. sure that you inbox me on Facebook after we get off this call, all right? Because you're uh -huh. going to be a part of the team. Before we leave, before I leave tonight to go back to Ghana, you're going to be enrolled in the embassy system, okay? And you're going to be very happy that you did. Because let me just say this before I leave. Yes. You know, a part of the embassy system was, you know, the embassy has always been there. But the embassy system has actually been put in place, you know, in, in April. Okay. And basically, I had the opportunity to put it in place five years ago when everything was great with wrestling and so on and so forth. And I didn't. And that was the biggest mistake I made. Oh, wow. The biggest mistake. So right now, I'm making up for lost time. And it's great. Everything happens for a reason. Right. I'm just glad that my show, The Prince Nana Show, is still on and popping. Everyone go to the Prince Nana show on YouTube. Yes. Check out Jade Chung's interview. Very good interview with the first lady of the embassy. The first lady of the embassy. And and if you didn't hear that one yet, Jason, oh man, what an interview. All I, right. And and you know, I'm just grateful to have fans and, and I saw and it in my like research it. and I will listen to it. Absolutely. Will, Please do. Make sure it. you guys follow me on there the prince nana show on youtube i have already twitter, subscribed all right at yeah. prince king nana on twitter and make sure anyone who's interested in learning more about the prince nana system get into my inbox on facebook okay. get on the phone with me let's talk all right i'm a very very sourced person i like to speak i like to share information and i like to share opportunities that can help alter or possibly change your life all awesome right. well, prince nana i'm Can sure this, uh, what? <laughs> okay hang on all right I'll what is the mission statement of the embassy system uh the mission statement is 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 very simple okay you're you're in business for yourself but not by yourself and that's basically what it is awesome you got it all right will you cut me off you got oh, anything else? <laughs> you got anything else you uh, like that? He wasn't. He didn't think I had a mission statement. You yeah, see? He, he, I'm on point. <laughs> all right, that was, hey, I like that. That's the short version. All right, don't <laughs> let me give you the whole version. Now we have to have another half hour here. Right. We, we're gonna we're gonna get Will to get to inbox you, and of course I'll be I'll be in touch with you. And, Absolutely. And, and Prince, Absolutely. can I get his? I, I can I get your number from him? Best success. Say Wait a minute. Again? Say can that I, again. May I have your number from him? Yeah, Jason? absolutely. Excellent. Take my number from him, all right? And just text me when you get off the line, and I'll take good care of you, all right? Awesome. And That's welcome to the team in advance. Welcome Thank to the you. Team. Thank you. Absolutely, man. Thank you. I won't let you down. Prince Nana. I'm your crown I, I jewel. You I can tell <laughs> in your voice. All right? And I want to say to all of your fans before I get off the line here, because I saw your poster, and I saw your YouTube page. You know, Jason works very hard on in the back scenes so support his channel all right support everything that they're doing here all right i look forward to coming back on the show and i'll bring some you know nail clipping items so then this way you guys can <laughs> practice all right you guys can practice for your trip to ghana when you come to cut my nails all right i appreciate you guys i got a jigsaw oh very good oh. <laughs> <laughs> that might work how about, how, about, how, about I, how about i bring a, a a young lady with me she does she does nails. hey you know what yeah yeah no you can bring her but she won't be cutting nails my friend all right oh. <laughs> all right she definitely won't be cutting nails <laughs> 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 Prince Nana, it's been a pleasure. It sure was. Absolutely, absolutely, guys. Thank you guys so much for having me on the show. And and any young people out there trying to, you know, figure out what your road is to success in the wrestling business is just continue to train, continue to be a good person, and continue to learn, all right? Continue to learn and, and earn, all right? Learn, learn and, and earn. earn. I like Whatever that. you do. I like so that this a lot. way you don't have any, all these rainy days you know, wondering, you know, what you're going to do with yourself because your passion isn't there yet. Start your passion. Make your own dreams happen. Do your own company. Start your own YouTube show. 
do something that's going to occupy your time until your passion comes knocking at the door. Take care, everybody. I'm glad you guys had me on the line. All right. Thank Take you, care, Nana. Thank you, sir. <laughs> All right. All right. Prince Nana, everyone. Hey, yo. That's the man. How was that? That was... I got to give it to you. That's two for two and oh. <laughs> they, they've been uh, off the chain. I'm, bat, I'm, I'm batting. I'm batting a thousand. Yes, you are. Um, I think we'll go ahead and uh, will. I don't know if we can even top that. Let's just go ahead and wrap this one up right here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was awesome. That was that was fun. And if you guys didn't get the information, rewind it. Yeah, and just, write it down. Yeah, just go back and rewind and write it down. Uh, it's it's uh. Let's see. Uh, we just had the we just had the Twitter page. I just gave it to you. What was it? The Twitter page is Prince Nana, uh, Prince King Nana. Prince, yeah, exactly. Prince King Nana on Twitter. Nana Abad Badu. I think I'm saying that right on <laughs> Facebook. And I believe it's it's Prince, um, it's Prince Nana or Prince King Nana on Instagram as well. Prince King Nana. And of course, the YouTube show is uh, the Prince Nana, Nana show. show. Also, I've got to plug real quick. I got to throw in a couple of free plugs here. These are not paid promotions. These are freebies, guys. The next one's going to cost you. Uh, let me go to my Instagram real quick. So I was because I was not prepared. Um, Big Will, here we go. Five for the Road is a brand new podcast by my good friends Jay Scott, Chris Johnson, and Will Thornton. You would probably like this one, Will. Uh, their first episode is the top five unplugged performances of all time. Unplugged? Like MTV unplugged and like acoustic performances. Oh. So that's the uh, Five for the Road podcast. You can find them on, I believe this is on Spotify. Or Google Play. Anyway, go to uh, go to Five for the Road uh, podcast on Instagram, uh, and also on Facebook to learn more about these guys. And then my buddy DeAndre, who I was just mentioning in the uh, in our little interview segment there with Prince Nana, um, Big Dre, uh, random hilariousness. Um, so he discusses. Uh, Oh, their first stand-up bit is about uh, Cedric, uh, Cedric the Entertainer. So how about that? So check out uh, Random Hilariousness, also a uh, podcast. And, of course, thank you again to Prince Nana for being on the show, Prince Nana Show. And uh, find him on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and all of your uh, social media outlets for Jason Willis. I mean, for Will Spann. You are Will Spann. I am Jason Willis. Do you have anything else? Just one thing. Um, yeah, go ahead. Alicia, I'm not at the PC yet. Okay. <laughs> and now, the Will and Willis podcast presents Will's final thought of the day. Don't use Dominion to count your votes. <laughs> They're fraudulent. God. They mean you no good. <sighs> Just count them by hand in a sharpie. <laughs> Hanging chats. <laughs> Damn. And uh, we've enjoyed it. And we'll see you once again right here on YouTube here at the Will and Willis Wrestling Podcast. Take care.